What's up, guys, and welcome back to another episode of My Summer Car. Once again, if you guys are enjoying this series, make sure you drop a like on the video. It'd be greatly appreciated. If you guys are wondering why we're starting in the menu screen or the main loading screen for the game today, that's because I made a small oopsie. During my previous recording session, I encountered the same audio issue that I've encountered many, many times before, so thankfully I know how to fix it, but since I had already recorded episode 12 of My Summer Car, I thought that maybe I could just do a re-recording, but that doesn't feel right for this game. So, we're quickly going to discuss what took place, and I will show you guys some footage of what took place in that previous recording session. Let's get into it. At the start of this recording session, I had literally no idea what we were going to accomplish, what we could possibly accomplish. But we started by just discussing the different possibilities, the different routes that we could go with the Satsuma. We then decided to go to Uncle's house just to check in with him, you know, make sure he's doing okay. The last time we saw him, he was actually passed out drunk out front of Quavo's shop, which was honestly just th just a little embarrassing. After discovering our beloved uncle was actually outside of his house in his lounge chair, he went on to tell us a very unfortunate story about how he lost his driver's license and was now unable to work. At this point, we had no idea that A, our uncle had a job, or B, could even hold a job, and it turns out he can't even do that. After having his license revoked, he was then laid off from the company. He then hit us with a proposition. If we wanted to, we could go work for him, basically fill his slot at this company, and we would then be able to keep whatever money we made. Sounds like a pretty good deal until he gets into more detail about what specifically this job is, that job being a waste water treatment facility, basically a poop water tanker driver. Now at this point, I had already decided that we should probably stop by Quavo's shop, which is conveniently fairly close to the wastewater treatment facility. It did take us quite a while to actually locate this thing, but having eventually located it, we of course took the Jonas brother clear on up there. Upon approaching the store, we noticed the two street racer boyos that we have seen before, one of which actually killed us in the past, so we didn't really pay them too much attention, certainly didn't flip them off this time, and uh, they seemed to just drive off and do their own thing. After that, we talked to Quavo real quick, got all the groceries that we needed, Needed and we were on our way. And upon leaving the store, we actually noticed that Uncle's van was at the inspection facility. So we quickly went over there, put the Joe Bro in the back of the van, and then took the van then to the wastewater treatment facility. My initial impression of this wastewater truck, the sewer truck, was, oh my god, this thing's sick. And then we hopped into it, and I was like, oh wait, there's way too many buttons. <laughs> thinking that it was going to be very difficult to drive, when in reality, it was very, very smooth. It had a nice range selector we could choose from low or high gears. But we took this bad boy, Billy, to our first stop, our first and only stop with this truck. We then noticed a car driving around the sporting field, or the soccer field, football field, whatever you'd like to call it, not that far from where we were. Upon closer inspection, we found some dude with a shotgun, very slowly, just like trying to follow this dude that's driving his car around out there. It was really, really strange, but we got back to work very quickly, and it didn't take us a long time to figure out how to actually use the sewer sucky sucky pump, I think is what I actually ended up calling it. Basically, all we had to do was take the hose off the side of the truck, attach it to the sucky sucky end, not the not the sprayer end. I almost made that mistake. But after we attached the hose, we then just had to open up this dude's sewer well, which had a lid and everything. It was really cool. We then dropped down the opposite end of the hose, turn on the hydraulic pump, and away we went. It was very, very quick, very easy. The only difficult part about it was actually leaving this dude's house because the wiki had told me we could just drive away with the hose still attached and everything would just be easier that way when in reality the hose detached making it way more difficult and I could never actually get it back up on the truck. So we decided to leave the hose there in the ditch, drive the truck back to the wastewater treatment facility, then we got back in uncle's van took it back home, and at this point, I had already felt like, oh my god, we've done so much. It was honestly a really, really long recording, and that's why I'm kind of sad that it just didn't work at all. Before winding the recording down, I first had to attempt to use our new spray paint can that we picked up from Quavo's shop, which to my surprise, 
was actually really easy. So I unbolted the air filter, unbolted the valve cover, sprayed both of those a nice bright blue, threw them back on the engine, and dude, they looked brand new. I wish we could have done this to the engine block, but unfortunately, I didn't really feel like taking out the whole engine again. The good news is that the longer you play this game, the more components on your car are going to break, and then in turn, you're going to have to replace them. So we can paint a couple of other things as we need to remove them, but I think that actually brings us back to present day when I'm now kind of doing this voiceover of that previous recording session. So let's get into today's episode, which again, is going to be a little bit shorter than I'm sure you guys are used to. We're just spawning in and we already have to take care of our stats. Oh wait, is it nighttime? I honestly don't remember what time it was. Okay, yeah, definitely nighttime, dude. It is big sleepy time. So let's take care of our stats really quick. We'll, uh, we'll have a drink, have a shower, maybe eat a couple of sausages, but we are getting a phone call. Please be a good phone call. Like, maybe Fleetari with our wheels? It's been a couple days, dude. It's It's been, what, four days now? Oh, no, it's the dude from the pub. All right, I really do need to pick that guy up because one of you told me that if we pick him up, I think it was three times, he'll give us the location of some large amount of money that he's hidden somewhere around the map, which could be very beneficial to our survival. Making money in this game is not the easiest or fastest thing for sure. All right, and there we go with all of our stats now taken care of. Our last one being fatigue. We can just head to bed and in the morning we'll have a nice bright new sunny day. There we go. And we still have uncle's van parked out front complete with our tractor. Dude, we got everything out here. Dude, every time I come back into the game, this little jack thing keeps getting moved. I put it over here every single time we load in and it just does this weird vibration thing and makes its way all the way to the pit. I, I don't understand. Now, just in case I didn't show this off well enough in the uh, the little dub edit that I had to do there, I wanna show you guys underneath this hood, dude. Look at that. They seriously look like creme de la creme, brand new, straight from the factory. I can't wait to try to paint other components as well. I know we have another mod installed that should allow us to paint a little bit more than what the base game allows for. I'm really hoping we can paint our wheels as well, but I'm assuming we'll have to get the tires taken off. Oh, you know what just literally just clicked in my brain. You know how we took those wheels to Fleetari? He offers a service of removing tires from wheels. This might actually be him on the phone now, but I'm thinking that maybe that, uh, that just got messed up somehow. Our sewage well is full of crap. Okay, come and empty it. Yeah, no thanks. But I'm thinking that's maybe where we messed up. Of course, you guys can let me know what you think about the situation, but I have just the a slight suspicion that if we would have had him remove those tires, he would have just mounted new ones on it had we purchased those from him. So that might explain why the tires are still just sitting on his counter. Should we go over and check? Oh, I forgot. We also lost the Jonas brother. I took it out of the van and put it next to our house and it just went poof and vanished. So I was gonna ride that over there. Let's actually go to the dump really quick and see if we can find it again. Well, unfortunately, it, uh, it doesn't look like the Joe bro got teleported here, so I don't know where the heck that thing ran off to, dude. Hopefully, we'll be able to find that thing again eventually, because that was like our fastest means of transportation. Apart from Uncle's van, of course, but now I don't think we have to actually return the van to him since he doesn't technically have it in his possession due to him losing his license, you know what I'm saying? Also, we're getting another phone call. This better not be another sewer call, okay? I, I don't ever want to do that job again. It was horrible. Yeah, my, my dad asked to call about the sewage well. It is full. He is drunk. <laughs> Thanks. Um, wow. Rough life, kid. Rough life. So we now have a bunch of different darts on our map here, on our handy dandy map that tell us different locations we can we can go to to perform different jobs, which is pretty sick. I didn't actually know about this until that previous recording. I also now know how to properly pronounce I'm basically finished now, dude. What can I say? No, but actually we need to figure out what we're gonna do in, in this current recording because I have no idea yet again. Should we just go to Fleetari and see if he's got our wheels finished? Because obviously he's not gonna call us and let us know that they're done. All right, we have made it back to our main man Fleetari's shop, dude. Let's go ahead and head on inside. 
and we'll see if any improvements have been made. Kind of looks like they're in the exact same location they were before. I don't know, do we just try to run these things? The only thing that's keeping me from just removing the wheels entirely is because A, the wiki said it could take a few days, which I don't know how many days is a few. I would think personally like three days, but we already paid him to put new tires on these wheels and he, I think, has yet to do so. So I just really don't feel like we should pay him again. I can't tell if those are new tires or if they're junk tires. Actually, hang on. I remember the wiki saying something about the texture on the wheels or on the tires actually being different per different tire. I'm currently looking at a side-by-side -side comparison of the different types of wheels. First, the ones that we found in the Haunted Mansion, the ones that we dropped off to Fleetari, and then the standard road tires, the ones we supposedly purchased from Fleetari. And these actually look a lot like what we have currently on the counter. So fingers crossed, man, these are actually the right ones, but we're gonna throw these in our backpack we're gonna be on our merry way. We've got them all in our backpack now, so we are ready to head out. Oh, there's a Randy across the street. What's going on, Randy? Let's go see if this dude has anything to say. Oh, he's got a crapper full too, I bet. Yep, sure does. What's going on, my guy? God, everyone just loves drinking and smoking in this town. He's double fisting it too, what a legend. Okay, we just got back home and our phone is ringing. Dude, what is this, the third or fourth time it's rang today? Rung today. Uh, I have a new game. Okay, um, what a nice young boy. <laughs> I have no idea what that was about. Now that we are back home, dude, let's get out our backpack and we will take out these new wheels. I'm actually gonna put one just on either side, or I guess in front of each wheel well that it's supposed to go to. There we go. And we will get these things mounted up. I believe we do actually need to lift the vehicle in order for this to happen though. So, where did that hand jack run off to? Oh, it's clear over here. Look at how far it's gotten. God, dude, if today is the day where we finally get to drive this thing, I'm just gonna be so stoked. We're not gonna go far. If we do drive it, we're not gonna go very far. Ah, shoot, dude. You know what else would have been smart since we already had the wheels off? We should have bled the freaking brakes. I guess we might still be able to do it. There is a nut back here and it is not fully secured yet. So let's get ourselves a size seven We'll go around to each side and uh, just make sure that that's fully loosened. Ooh, this is actually really difficult to see with the wheel on and stuff. And our phone's ringing again, dude. 2G residents. Uh... <laughs> okay, dude, everybody in town, now that uncle's given us the keys, basically given us his legacy, everyone just wants us to come suck out their uh, their sewer thing. I don't think so. I don't think so. We got we got better things to do than that. There we go. I can see it just barely now and that is loosened up as well. So perfect. And now under here, I'm just going to unscrew both the clutch and the brake reservoirs. Nicely done. Got those unscrewed. Now let's hop back in and we're actually going to enter driving mode. I know we're at a pretty wonky angle right now, but it needs to be done. All we have to do, I think is just depress the brake pedal a couple of times. Basically like pump the brakes, you know, and then we'll hold it and then we'll pump it some more. You know, this is how it's done in real life, of course. Why is our phone always ringing today? I'm half tempted to unplug this sucker. 2G residents. Okay, uh, solicitor. <laughs> Great. Should we just not answer the phone anymore? I guess we're not waiting on anything. I just hate to miss out on some sweet opportunity that we just maybe don't know about yet. But anyways, I think the brakes are, are pretty well pumped up now. So let's take out our size 7 again and we will tighten down all of these brake lines. Kind of forgot to do this, really. All right, and this is the last one right over here. So let's get the rest of these wheels on, dude. I'm ready. I'm ready to let her rip. Or wait, did we charge the battery? I feel like we did. We might have taken it off the charger just so we didn't fry it. But I almost forgot to top off the fluids, dude, for these reservoirs. That was like the whole reason we were bleeding the brakes, you know? Very, very difficult to fill, but hopefully we can get all three of these things. Maybe they all get filled at the same time. 
right? Or this thing's empty. No, nope, still got fluid in it. Okay, so these two over here are good. We're gonna have to remember that. Or wait, should we just throw these other ones away? What good does it do to hang on to them when we have a trash can over here that we can actually start a fire in? There we go, start our fire and drop in our brake fluid, please. Oh, I didn't really think this through. I don't want it to burn down our house, which it very well could. Brake fluid's very, very flammable, so this is probably not the best thing to do. Let's just try to scoot the garbage barrel maybe out here. So it's a little bit further away from the house. Yikes. All right, I'm starting to get a little scared again, dude. <laughs> Not because our car is about to fall into our uh, our oil change pit here, or our inspection pit, I'm pretty sure is what they're called. There we go, that's a little straighter. But we still haven't done a proper alignment on this thing. So even if we do get it to start and, uh, and we back it out of the garage here, I can't imagine it's gonna drive very straight. But nonetheless, dude, we gotta try it. Oh wait, yep, kinda forgot. We need a battery in this bad boy. I kind of think that the alternator might actually be on its way out because it doesn't really seem like the battery charges fully but we'll do the positive terminal first then the negative terminal choke fully out first step next key in the ignition let's crank her give her a little bit of gas not too much there we go okay we're running afr is about about 11 so not terrible but not exactly where we want it to be it is cold start though so we should probably wait for our temp to be right in the middle, right at operating temp, and then we'll be ready to uh, to drive this thing on away. But we can we can probably back it out of the garage for right now. So let's do a little bit of chase cam action here, and we will uh, attempt to put it in reverse, Terry. There we go. Forgot parking brake. Right, that's important. Let's uh, let's disengage that. Ooh, okay. Oh, we just killed it. We just killed it. Is there like a clutch button that I <laughs> that I don't know about or something? And backwards. There we go. All right. Well, we killed it again. Surely there's a clutch button. Clutch is X? Dude, I haven't used the clutch on any vehicle up until this point. So that's kind of interesting, but okay. Try her again. There we go. All right. Starts right up, dude. Every single time. Still got the choke out. Oh God, not another phone call. Do we even... Yeah, we should probably look. God dang it, dude. Always interrupting us at the worst times. 2G residents. Oh my god, solicitor again, dude. Yep, I'm done. I'm done answering the phone. All right, so clutch is X, but that's also our backpack. So conflicting keybind, kind of a kind of a bummer. And then we'll rev it up just a little bit. Let the clutch out, push it back in. Uh, chase cam. Okay, very, very difficult to drive this, but we're, we're doing our best. Rev and dump, dude. Rev and dump. That's how it's done. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, brakes. Wait, what's our temp at? Oh, dude, we're about to operating temp. This is perfect. Choke's going back in. Okay, choke is all the way in. Oh god, we are running rich AF, dude. It's evening out. It's, it's slowly coming back down to the 14.7 mark. And let clutch out. There we go. There we go. Okay, it's not terrible. Could be worse. Oh, baby. Oh, baby, we are off to the freaking races, dude. Look at this. Oh, this is so good. This is so good. Alignment's honestly not that bad. It doesn't appear to be pulling. Ah, never mind. It's kind of pulling to the right a little bit harder than the left. This is so sick. It's fast, too. Really, really fast. Okay. I certainly don't want to get too far, but like, let's just go down to the end of the road. Let's see, let's see how many balls this thing has. I also have to remember, holy crap, we're revving out to six grand right now. I also have to remember to get a screenshot of this. So let's actually clutch in and downshift to neutral so we can clutch out. And I think this is honestly a pretty good spot to take a photo. Eh, that's a, that's a good picture, right? There we go. There we go. That's that's a keeper. That one there's a keeper. All right, clutch in, shift up. First, drop it. Oh, we're out, dude. Oh wait, no we ain't. No we ain't. What's going on? <laughs> what is this? Go forward. What the heck just happened? Did I accidentally engage my parking brake? No. Dude, why? We were doing so good. Come on. Come on. Get up there. Get going. Get going. Let's go. <laughs> what is happening? 
Yeah, rear wheels are not moving whatsoever. Back to neutral. I gotta see, maybe I, maybe I, oh, what the heck? Okay, okay, we're moving now. No idea what caused that. Honest to God, no idea what, oh Jesus, keep it on the road. We don't want to repair a lot of stuff. So alternator, I think probably needs replaced. Kind of seems like it's going out if our battery is not charging. And then additionally, I think we might also have a starter issue, which not very surprising. Starters go bad sort of all the time. Those are the only two issues that I've really noticed on our on our little drive so far. And I'd say that's good news, all things considered. I mean, if you guys remember, we put this car together ourselves. So, kind of surprised it's not just engulfed in flames right now. But here we go. We're gonna try to pull her back into the garage. Hopefully we can do that without killing it. Oh God, oh God. All right, keep her going. Keep her going. You're good. You're good. <laughs> You're good. <laughs> Pull it right over the pit, dude. Oh, that is very dicey. That was honestly very, very scary, but also very fun. And I'm really curious to see what our battery did during that. Hopefully the alternator actually did charge it for once. So let's go ahead and remove that bad boy and we will check her out. What's the verdict? We gotta replace the alternator or what? Oh, definitely big dog. Look at that. Battery sitting right in the center. And it, it should be, you know, staying charged, staying fully charged. So that kind of sucks. There's more money that we just have to dump into this thing. So where's the, uh, where's the starter at? That would be on the transmission side, right? So over there somewhere. I guess it doesn't really matter. We don't have to look at it. Visually, it's not going to look damaged in any way. But there you guys have it. We finally went on our first successful test drive, our, our first and only test drive. And uh, like I said, dude, I'm I'm honestly surprised that this thing didn't just immediately engulf in flames and uh, and explode. It held its own out there. Our old Satsuma did us well. So with that being said, you guys, I know this episode's probably a little bit shorter than I'm sure you guys are used to, but I think I am going to wind things down here. So once again, if you guys did enjoy, please leave a like, leave a comment, help support the dream by smashing that subscribe button. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Peace.